Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I have a treat for you, and um, it's it's also educationally sound for um, for the coin collectors out there. And what I have here is an old velour type jewelry box container. Uh, this was this was passed down to me from my dad. Uh, of course, he, he passed away. He's been gone for 12 years, but um, my, my mom had recently given this to me, and what's inside of here will captivate, uh, hopefully it will, and um, kind of bring you back to the original times to when coins were originally stored. Uh, to original patina because coins the, the today Especially the ones that you see online and all that stuff. They're all They're all bright white. They you know, they look like They were minted fresh except they have all the dings and scratches on them and you know, but These coins in here have been inside this container for the better part of the last 62 63 years and I, I'll get into how this was acquired um, for my dad so I'm gonna go ahead and open it up go ahead and bring this in a little bit so my dad's from the East Coast he was born in Delaware and when he was in his early 20s he had worked for a company called Playtex Okay, you guys know Playtex. It's a company that's very much still around. And they, they're, not only are they around, but they're thriving. You know, they, their, their product is very specific in the marketplace. But he, he had worked there, I believe, from 53 to 55 or 56. Uh, it was right after he got out of the Army, uh, went to work, and that's where he worked at. So during his tenure at Playtex, um, once a year, and I, I believe it's right after the holidays, um, the company used to pay out in silver dollars, which is really neat, you know? Uh, and in fact, they would put them in this container as a bonus. So the coins in here are original to when he was originally paid in the 50s, and the patina on them is original exactly what you would expect from coins being stored for 60 years so this is an 1890 Morgan dollar you could tell it's genuine because see, see the reading the reading is toned much like the rest of the coin um, the color on this one is a light russet coloring if you could think of a russet potato, which is kind of brown, uh, that's exactly the coloring on this particular coin. So it's not blast white, that's for sure. So there's the reverse on this one. Uh, it's a Philadelphia, so it's a relatively common date. Grade-wise, it's a XF. Um, I don't even think it's an AU. Um, Morgan dollars in the 50s were still spent uh, not as many people were using them however if if companies such as Playtex were handing them out as bonus and uh, from what my dad told me um, when when he received a paycheck the, the option was there to be cashed out entirely in silver dollars now how, how cool was that and um, if it were me man I, I'd be hoarding every single one of them because you just never know I asked him, hey, did you ever come across Carson Cities in there? And, you know, he he, he couldn't recall. But um, here's another one with that same similar type of patina. Of course, you got a little bit of uh, gray, darker tone right there. This is a regular 1922. All right. uh, with an S mint mark, so a little bit tougher date. It's nothing spectacular, but period original patina which is usually indicative of coins that have been stored in some sort of container without the without the acid free you know type of 
lining or fabric that goes along with it. So here's the 22 that was in there. The next one we have here is a common 1921. This one is really dark. It's got dark russet toning. In case if you guys were wondering as far as the, the scale of, of toned colors, russet is on the backside of nearly terminal, which is kind of, they say terminal as in uh, least desirable, least favorable coloring uh, for this type of coin, anything silver. Uh, it's only when you get into, you know, like the reds and orange hues and um, as they begin to turn to green and teal, that's turning and gets darker, that turns into the terminal stage is what they call it of toning. So if a coin is completely black and the toning has just destroyed the coin, there's no way you could dip it to make it look attractive. Uh, this one is indeed an S mint mark, 21S. All right. And I have one more piece I wanted to share with you. This one's kind of neat. It's fashioned as a keychain exonumia piece. Um, the keychain piece is not silver. Um, and this is also a 1922 piece with that same similar type toning. This is a coin for as long as I remember the container was a coin that sat right in the bottom. So the back side of it, which has a nice golden russet, was always up against the silk in this container right here. So that's the reverse. And this one is also an S mid mark. So. It's kind of a little time capsule that I wanted to share with you. Um, if anything, it gives you an idea of what actual toning of a coin would like over time, in spite of the fact that all four of these examples are very well circulated. If you did find a coin that was uncirculated with the same type of uh, toning as this, it's very desirable. In case, you, you know, it, as, as kind of an add to the video, Toning always adds anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of value to the coin, sometimes a lot more. Uh, we've seen common dated Morgan dollars sell at auction with unbelievable rainbow tones on there, sell for a hundred times actual value. So, I'm glad I was able to share this with you. Thanks again for watching. I'm your host, Blue Ridge Silverhound. Please feel free to comment. Please do like the video if you enjoy the content and what I have to share with you this evening. I appreciate you guys uh, checking in. Uh, it, it makes a whole world of difference uh, to me um, having you here share through this journey with me. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this away, but you guys enjoy your evening.